Hi everyone. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Arvi Gundur and I work at Flinders University. Today I'm going to talk about financial transactions that occur in some function of a cybercrime. I think that we often take the way that we send and receive money for granted. We fail to think about processes that are outside of what we're normally used to. I recently led a project where we looked at various ways that transactions occur in online criminal contexts. We identified a few types of financial ecosystems that offenders make use of. But before I continue, I want to take a quick aside to talk about a space where we didn't find much information, but I still think is very important to think about. That's the asset market. Now, most of the world's wealth is stored in assets, and I'm talking about property, stocks, and bonds. But we didn't really see anyone looking to transact value digitally in cybercriminal contexts. It's possible that the asset market is a space in which money can be laundered, but we don't have any good estimates in terms of value or what that looks like. And as it becomes easier to transact assets digitally, we should keep our eye on this space. Now, let's go back to transactions that we know about in the context of cybercrime. We started with looking at fiat currency. Fiat currency is state backed currency, and the overwhelming majority of the world's money is fiat currency. Now, with our lives increasingly digital, most of that fiat currency isn't in paper or plastic notes or metal coins, but in digital currency. And that's the way that most of us deal with money today. Let's be honest, when's the last time that you had a hundred bucks burning a hole in your pocket? Fiat digital currency is hands down the most common currency type targeted by criminal actors. Historically, thieves have focused on compromising systems like the automated clearinghouse system or the SWIFT system, but both of these systems have improved their fraud detection. We need to remember that there are sanctioned alternative payment systems that transact fiat currency or tokens that are tied to fiat currency, which are approved and regulated by government actors. Some of these services may be familiar to you, such as Western Union or MoneyGram. They are often leveraged by less tech-savvy social engineers to receive funds from their victims. But there is a burgeoning market for alternative payment systems throughout the world in the form of mobile money. Notable examples include M-Pesa and Yandex Money. The volume of value transacted with these platforms is growing, and some of these payment systems are accepted by illicit marketplaces in the clear, gray, and dark web. This is particularly the case given that these systems still often have weak know-your-customer standards given the modest sums that are typically transacted at a time. There are also other options for folks to transact money, such as voucher systems or payment card systems like PaySafeCard, MoneyPack, and Ucash. All of these systems are legal, and all of these systems have been used as a means to pay ransoms and to buy products in illicit marketplaces. Let me move on to the money shot, if you'll excuse the pun. And let's have a look at virtual or cryptocurrencies. Certainly within policy and criminology circles, there's a lot of interest on the role of virtual or cryptocurrencies. In my view, cryptocurrencies are not hugely versatile and are used for a limited number of crime types, such as paying for illicit goods or ransoming a victim. They have a small role in unauthorized mining operations, cryptojacking, where the attacker steals capacity from the victim's computer in order to generate new crypto tokens. And we know that despite there being literally thousands of cryptocurrencies out there, Bitcoin is still the most transacted cryptocurrency. And it's only pseudonymous, meaning that only with a few pieces of known information, its users and transactions can be traced and linked. Regulatory frameworks have made it more difficult to transact Bitcoin in rogue exchanges, but its ease to acquire and transact compared to other privacy-minded tokens means that it's still the cryptocurrency of choice for most online offending contexts. There also exist other non-government sanctioned payment systems, some of which even predate Bitcoin. Many of these systems have come and gone, like Eagle and Liberty Reserve. They've been shut down by law enforcement, but one persists. It's called web money. It's a platform that appears to comply with some of the know your customer requirements, though it remains a point of payment that is prominent on gray web marketplaces. These are spaces where somebody might buy bulletproof hosting, for example. The last way we saw value transacted was via bartering. We saw this with goods and services, as well as with the trade of child exploitation materials. 
So that's a snapshot of how illicit transactions unfold in cyberspace. That's my time, and I thank you for yours.